bless us and keep us in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Lord, be with all the people on our sick list, Heavenly Father. Lord, be with those that are on our encouragement list. Be with the bereaved families that we're aware of and unaware of. Lord, give us power from on high, dear Lord, to exegete this scripture today for our Wednesday YouTube. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you. Thank you, dear Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We're back. We're back again. Hit that subscribe button. Tell us uh, about how you like what we're doing here at Unity, NBC, Sacramento, California. And all we're trying to do is tell a sin-cursed world, tell a dying world, tell an unsaved world that Jesus is the only answer for this generation. There's only one name given under the heavens by which men shall be saved. Oh, at the name of Jesus. Every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. So, 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 so that he's king of kings, that he's lord of lords, that he's our all in all. So, my brothers and sisters, hit that subscribe button. We have been in the book of Romans a year and a half. We are still in the book of Romans, the 15th chapter today, verses 15 and 16. We hope to finish this up in the ensuing weeks and go on to a new a biblical project. Thank you for all of you that have supported us. Thank you for those who have written and, um, expressions and comments. Can please continue to support us here at Unity NBC. We are in the book of Romans, Pro Romanos, the book of uh, the letter to Rome by Paul. And what a time we've been having in this um, series. Today we're going to go to Romans, the 15th chapter, verse 15 and 16. Now we left you in verse 13 saying, How may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in the hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Verse 14, Now I myself am confident concerning you, my brethren, that you also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able to also admonish one another. So when you're filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, there's great things you can do for the Lord. There's You can stand when it looks like you're not going to be able to stand. And when it looks like all odds are against you, the power of the Holy Ghost will give you power to stand. So brothers and sisters, as we uh, go deeper and try to finish up this book of Romans, I learn to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now we go to today's text, verse 15. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written you more boldly to you on some points as reminding you because of the grace given to me by God. So what Paul is saying here is that he is uh, written boldly on some points reminding you of the grace of God given to him. Oh, how bold was Paul. Hallelujah. It is written, grafo, I wrote. He's talking about what he wrote for the cause of Christ. Wouldn't it be something today if more people sat out after your, your pastor preached on Sundays and you went somewhere and wrote down what he wrote and then you think about it because as, 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 as even as a preacher, I listen to a lot of preachers. I was listening to Dr. Charles Stanley on yesterday and he said something that made me stop in my tracks. Uh, he said, so many people are going to lay out and go to sleep and they're not going to wake up again. And guess what? You have no power over the fact that you did not wake up. And here's the thing. You don't have any power if you didn't know that you're going to wake up again. But hopefully if that happens, you wake up in the Lord. So when I say write, grafo, brothers and sisters, spend some time writing in your Bible. Spend some time taking some notes from the sermon. Sometimes turn that music off and, 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 and listen to some preaching and teaching and write down. That's how some people are so confused and messed up now because you don't spend no time in the word of the true and the living God. Let your, as Hank Canegraaff used to say, let your final part of deportation be the word of God. What? The word of God. Write, grapho, write. 
the Bible, the Word of God. Now let's read that 15th verse from another version. Nevertheless, I have written grapho, brethren, in part boldly as admonishing you by the grace that is given to me of God. Let's read from still another version, Romans 15, 15 still. But I have written to you very openly about some things I wanted you to remember. I did this because God gave to me this special gift. He was, Paul was talking about being bold, bold, tolomos, tolomos, bold, very, not only bold, but very bold, having courage, having boldness, having unbridged, unbridled confidence. When you're doing something for the Lord, be bold about it. Paul was a bold person for the Lord. He was Thomas, bold. We have to be bold for the Lord. Let's read Romans 15, 15 from still another version. I have written to you with unflinching honesty. And you know what unflinching means? When you get ready, like say two boxers are in the ring and you're getting ready to box, you can't be flinching because if you flinch, or that guy you get an uppercut on you or a cross on you or a jab on you if you're not blocking or paying attention. But unflinching means you're going to just boldly go out there and hit your opponent, or your, your opponent. And sometimes it could look, when you look at the film of it, it looks like, wow, that was reckless. But no, it was unflinching. He decided to do unflinching damage and violence to that other person. What is Paul saying here? Have un with unflinching honesty on many topics because I do not want you to ever lose sight of the tremendous, whoo, let's say that one more time, the tremendous grace God has given to me. So what it basically saying is we got to be bold, brothers and sisters. You want to get these kids off of this dope out here in the streets? Be bold with the gospel. You want your children to, to come out of the cults, the occult and average Christian groups and go forward for the Lord? Be bold. When you got hard-headed church members that are being mean and hateful, give them the gospel even just a little bit more. Be bold about it. The people in the world that think Christianity is a joke, that they don't care about the Bible, they don't care about God, they're not. You be bold. When they come at you with nonsense, you be bold. When they come at you with something that, that's not of God, you be bold. Be bold for the Lord in the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to read to you one scripture from 1 Corinthians 2.2. 2. When they come at you, you give them this, I determine not to know anything amongst you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Be bold about that. They don't want to hear about the gospel, but you still stand and tell them, I claim not to know anything amongst you except Jesus Christ, oh, and him crucified. Stand on that. Be bold about it. Stand up for it as if it's the last thing you're going to do. Stand and be bold for the Lord. It hurts me to see all these people dying and going to hell. And you got church folks that won't be bold for the Lord. You be bold for the Lord because if I'm not bold, we won't be able to for the July barbecue. No, you be bold. I don't want to eat turkey dinner with me at Christmas or Thanksgiving. You be bold. Why not have a chance? Be bold for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans, the 15th chapter, verse 16, and we're through. That I might be a minister. Oh, by the way, I never gave you the subject. I never gave you the subject for this uh, uh, show. A minister of Jesus Christ. A minister of Jesus Christ because it comes directly out of the 16th verse. And I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, sanctified. Here it is again, by the Holy Spirit. Let's read 16 from another version again. To be a servant of the Messiah, Yahshua, for the Gentiles with the priestly duty of presenting the good news of the God of me as a priest of God, as a servant of God, as a minister of God, presenting 
the good news. That's what we are to do. Don't be afraid of these kids that are talking about, I'm going into Buddhism. Don't be afraid of these kids that say, I'm going to start going after the writings of Cahill Cabron. Don't be scared of these kids that are coming up Islam. Don't be scared of these kids that are becoming atheists or agnostics. Don't be scared of these folks that say, I don't care about the, about the Bible. I'm going to go get me a tarot reader. I'm going to go get somebody to read my poems, to read my tea leaves. I'm going to go get somebody that's uh, following Taoism. No, you follow Jesus and be bold, my brothers and my sisters. Ask a minister of Jesus Christ. One more. Let's read uh, the 16th verse from still another version of the Bible. Being the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering to the Gentiles might be pleasing, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Call, learn to call on the Holy Spirit. Please call on the Holy Spirit. A lot of people today, you know, we, before we started taking we, we had a political conversation. Nowadays, everybody's got a political opinion. They got an opinion about Trump, they got an opinion about Biden, they got an opinion about this, they got an opinion about that. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Cut back on some of that talking. Be led by the Holy Spirit and pray, brothers and sisters. The Bible says that man ought to always pray and not faint. I'm not caring or caring what's happening with man. I'm, I guess I'm going to vote, but by the same token, I'm leaving, leading and guided by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let's read verse 16 from one more version and we're through. Hallelujah. His grace makes me know I am a minister of, listen at this, the anointed one. That's another name for Jesus Christ, the anointed one. Jesus calls us to serve nations. The good news of God is the focus of my priestly work. As a preacher of the gospel, my focus is to tell people about Jesus and not be ashamed when I do it, not be ashamed of who I am. I went somewhere earlier this morning and I just identified myself as Pastor so and so and they go, wow, this is normally, and this is true, this is Usually pastors don't identify they're trying to you know be cool. I said, I don't have time to be cool, time is too short. Life is too short. We have a lot of work to do. I'm coming in as a pastor. So that means if I gotta have a conversation with somebody that's part of my priestly duties, we're gonna have that conversation. Amen. Affect the nations have become an offering to God, totally acceptable. Hallelujah. Indeed, made holy by the work of the Holy Spirit. So, brothers and sisters, what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to end this message today. Be bold for the Lord. Be bold in everything that you do for the Lord. And come on, my brothers and sisters, as it says in the Word, do whatever you need to do, but be holy about it. By the power and work of the Holy Spirit. Be holy in everything that you do. Hallelujah. And follow, hallelujah, under the unction, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You'd be surprised who you can reach under the unction of the Holy Spirit. My last thing came out of Romans 6.11. Likewise, you, I do reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but alive in God, in Christ Jesus, our Lord. My brothers and sisters, be bold for the Lord. They may not want to hear it. Be bold for the Lord. My last thing on this Wednesday afternoon, whatever you do for the Lord, be bold for it. Be bold in it. Tell the world that he died on that cross. Tell the world he died on that cross, but God remember that came off of that cross, put in a borrowed tomb, but got up on the third 